हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज मेंटल सौमित चौधरी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू अवर सीरीज ऑफ डिस्कशन अबाउट मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट टॉपिक्स एंड मोस्ट एक्सपेक्टेड टॉपिक्स दैट कैन कम इन प्रॉब्लम्स ऑफ ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद अवर डिस्कशन ओके आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द सेशन द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू नेशनल पार्क Odisha has recognized community forest reserve rights inside Sanjay Gandhi National Park. Before discussing this question, we have to understand what is community forest reserves. Okay, here it said resource. Basically, a government land is being provided. okay and a government land conservation is mandated conservation is mandated by local communities on the government land okay on the government land now what's happened here what's happening here the next question that can arise in our mind that does the conservation forest resource or conservation forest reserves are they legitimized or are they provided legal protections the answer would be yes they are being provided legal protections under amendment in wildlife protection act 1972 the act was amended in 2006 the act was amended in 2006 all right now let's come to the option sanjay gandhi national park is in it's in maharashtra why it was in news because it was said that human activities are continuously increasing in this national park and eventually a great amount of threat is being posed in the activities of this national park therefore it was decided what was decided it was decided to declare the whole region as eco sensitive zones now the question comes that what are these eco sensitive zones eco sensitive zones are basically the shock absorbers okay shock absorbers around the protected areas shock absorber around the protected areas let's say this is a national park and across the outer boundary of the national parks eco sensitive zones are there okay nail did the outer boundary of the national parks the activities can be regulated prohibited or can be restricted prohibited regulated or restricted or permitted prohibited regulated or permitted under the permitted activities there is no need to take separate permission from the authorities okay it includes sustainable activities like agriculture collecting traditional forest rights collection of minor forest produce all such aspects are there regulated activities although they are prohibited but they are regulated by law by the application of law like drastic change in agricultural pattern 
like hoteling activities, tourism activities, construction activities and prohibited activities are those activities that cannot be allowed in any circumstances. What can be the activities? The activities can be like commercial mining, all right, deforestation, okay, heavy construction, heavy industrialization. These type of activities are totally prohibited, okay. So, first statement would be wrong. The second statement, Hemis National Park, which is situated in Ladakh, is the largest national park. Yes, it is famous for Himalayan musk deer. It is famous for Himalayan musk deers, clouded leopards, snow leopards, etc. Okay. Bhitar Kanika is famous for olive ridley turtle. Yes. Olive ridley turtles, they are basically the kind of turtle. They are basically those type of turtles that are found in the warm, warm waters of Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. Warm water of Pacific and Atlantic Oceans. They swim all across the oceans and come to the regions of Indian Ocean near the Ganjam coast. Ganjam coast of Odisha. All right. Especially in Bhitar Kanika National Park. It's actually a marine national park. It's actually a marine national park. It comes to the region of Bhitar Kanika Marine National Park. Where you can see the nesting season of olive ridley turtles. The nesting seasons, seasons are said to be arid bars. In these seasons, tourism is highly regulated or prohibited. Okay. So, yes, second and third would be the correct answer. The correct answer would be B. All right. Now, let's talk about DMH crop. DMH are basically genetically modified crop varieties genetically modified crop varieties what is the speciality about the genetic crops okay the genes are being altered from one living organism to another living organism to give the desired results for that particular species or plant let's say for example what can be the options for example the bacteria of soil is being exploited or being taken out and mixed with the bacteria of cotton. It leads to the formation of Bt cotton. The Bt cottons are very much resistant to the bull worm or pink worm attacks. Likewise, it is dhara modified. Okay, DMH is a variety of mustard. It is being developed by the scientist of Delhi University. Developed by the scientist of De Delhi University. And what's so special about this? It is that it is the first food crop of India. BT cotton was not a food crop. It is the first food of crop of India which has been given, okay, permission for commercial cultivation. Alright, so this makes the first option correct. And the question comes that who gives the permission for commercial cultivation and who gives, who certifies whether the field trials that are conducted for these type of genetically modified crops are they sustainable or not are they well enough or not are they safe and secure or not okay 
So it is being permitted by genetic engineering appraisal committee. Okay. Now let's talk about this genetically engineering appraisal committee. Okay. It is responsible for conducting field trials and it is responsible for giving permissions. It is responsible for giving permissions that whether the field trial is successful and the whether that particular crop or any, uh, I would say, uh, food crop or non-food crop is suitable to be commercially exploited, uh, exploit, exploited it or produced in the market. Okay. Final releasing into the market is permitted by GEAC and it comes under the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. I hope you are getting the point. Now let's come to the question. DMH 11 marks the inaugural approval of commercial. Okay, exactly. It is the first food, uh, food crop. DMH 11 stands for variant of rice. No, it is variant of mustard. The development of this crop can be attributed to Indian Institute of Rice Research. No, it is by Delhi University Scientist. Third is also wrong. Studies conducted by Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee operating on the Ministry of Agriculture led to approval. No, it is not operating under Ministry of Agriculture. Listen to my words very carefully. They are not operating under Ministry of Agriculture. They are operating under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So, only one would be the correct answer. Clear? The correct answer would be only one. Which of the following statements correctly distinguishes oxoplastics from conventional plastics? Oxoplastics are basically those materials whose degradation or decomposition starts as soon as they come in contact with the ultraviolet rays. Okay. Now let's see the options. Oxoplastics include particular additives that trigger their decomposition upon exposure to UV radiations or heat, a feature absent in conventional plastics. So, C is the correct option. These type of terms are very much frequently asked in news. So, okay, the higher probability that questions can come from these topics. The characteristics shared by wood lice, millipedes, fiddle crabs, slugs, settings the, them apart from most others in respective taxonomic groups is low oxygen environment, detritus food chain, bioluminescence. They act as hermetro, uh, herma, a uh, hermaphroditic, possessing both male and female reproductive organs. See, they are basically detrivores who take part in decomposition food they generally take part in decomposition food chain now let's understand this what is accompanied by decomposition Okay, the saprophytic food chain, detrivores, and the saprophytes. Detrivores are basically the bigger organi organisms that helps in fragmentation. Fragmentation of dead remain of plant and animal. They basically help in fragmentation of dead remains of plants and animals. Getting my point? Fragmentation is the first stage. From where? 
the actual decomposition cycle starts. It goes on from there. The second stage is leaching where the dissolved minerals of topsoils they get mixed with the water and percolates down to mix with the groundwater. After the process of leaching, the topsoil is devoid with it is devoid with what? The topsoil is devoid with basic nutrition. A third stage is catabolism. Here the activity of saprophytes, bacteria, fungi, they start. Bacteria, fungi, they start. The decomposition is now brought to from macro to the micro level. And after this, there is, a, there is a process of humification where there is no furthermore decomposition. The organic matter is completely decomposed and the material is being converted into inorganic matter. Alright. And after this, the last stage is mineralization where finally the whole organic matter gets converted into inorganic matter like nitrogen phosphorus carbon these minerals or the nutritions are being intaken by the plants to start the terrestrial food chain all right <coughs> so yes they are integral components of detritus food chain all they compose of detritus. They are demak. Even earthworm is also a what detritus. Consider the following statements: the forest, agriculture, and commodity trade dialogue constitute a government-to-government -government exchange. Okay, yes, it is a government-to-government -government exchange. Within the fact dialogue, major producers and consumers of globally traded agricultural communities. Unite with the aim of safeguarding forests. Yes, obviously, these type of initiatives are basically mandated for conservation of forest resources. The Tropical Forest Alliance operates under World Economic Forum Center for Nature and Climate as an integral component of climate action platform. Yes, this is also true. So, the correct answer would be D in this case. Consider the following species. Great Indian Bustard. Great Indian Bustard is the state bird of Rajasthan. It is the state bird of Rajasthan. Alright. Go down. Go down. It is said to be critically endangered as per IUCN's red list. They are endemic to Indian subcontinent. Okay, it is the largest flightless bird. It is the largest flightless bird. All right. And when the bird becomes flightless, they are okay they are more vulnerable to poaching. They are generally found in Rajasthan, Andhra, Gujarat and Rajasthan, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat and Maharashtra. Alright. Nilgiri Tahar. Yes, it is endemic to South India. The locations or the traces of Nilgiri Tahar has also been found in Sangam literature. Even in the Mesolithic period, they are found. Even in the Mesolithic period, they can be found. Okay, Nilgiri Tar is found in Shola Forest. Yes, this is absolutely true. Shola Forest region is, is they basically constitute the part of Kerala. Alright. And the Tahar 
the nilgiri tahar the iucn status is endangered government is also conducting a census on nilgiri tahar there would be combined census of kerala and tamil nadu government it is the state animal of tamil nadu as well all right <clears throat> okay asiatic lands can be found only in gir forest yes asiatic lands are endemic to the sherujin near the shatrunji river kamleshwar dam which is present in the gir forest there has been pyqs over the asiatic lands all right earlier there was a idea conceived all right there was a spread of where canine distemper virus the virus were mainly motivated the virus were mainly mandated okay for reduction in population of the lions so government thought if there is an endemic of this virus it could lead to swiping away of population of this lions so it would become impossible for the administration to protect the lion species so it was decided to translocate translocate the lions it was decided to translocate for the translocation of the lions and the lions were translocated where well, lions were being translocated to it was decided to the kuno national park but it was not implemented implemented it was only decided that the land should be translocated to kuno because of favorable landscape of kuno which will support the existence and survival of the lions but in return of lions why the kuno is being famous kuno is famous for the reintroduction of cheetah Kuno is basically present in the regions of Shiopur. It is a plateau region, a heighted region. It provides a conducive environment, conducive grassland, deciduous forest, which provides the proliferation condition of the lands. Okay, so D would be the correct answer. One, two, and three. Next question. key biodiversity areas are sites that play a substantial role in maintaining global biodiversity true it serves as a tools for private sector companies and financial institutes to mitigate environmental and social risk associated with the project exactly proposing a site as a key biodiversity area is prerogative not limited to government alone okay no they are just they can mainly be proposed by government agencies every important bird and biodiversity area qualifies as a key biodiversity area true so the correct answer would be 1 2 and 4 it is the only prerogative of government government can only designate key biodiversity areas all right consider the following with reference to organisms in marine environment organisms known as foraminifera exhibit amoeba like characteristics and a single cell protistis if i divide the animals or the uh, or the kingdoms into five types protista monera protista monera fungi all right protista is there for a uh, monera is there fungi is there plants and animals the protista constitutes mainly the bacteria for foraminifera is also one of them okay foraminifera is also one of them it also includes cyanobacteria okay they are also said to be blue green blue green algae getting my point <clears throat> so first statement is correct monera they are generally single cell they are micro species 
they can include diatoms they can include diclofragnets diophragnets they can include protozoa etc fungi it consists of yeast molds plants and animals kingdom okay organisms okay within the marine environment copepods no it should be diatoms diatoms which are a sub type of monera they play a role as a primary producer inside the oceans inside the oceans diatoms plays the role of primary producers clear shallow coastal water serves as habitat for sea otters exactly sea otters that feeds on sea urchins and the sea urchins that feeds on the seaweeds sea otters are said to be sentinel species they are said to be keystone species okay not sentinel but keystone species their survival is essential for any kind of marine ecosystem to survive all right because sea otter feeds on sea urchins and sea urchins feeds on seaweeds if sea otter's population eliminates there would be proliferation or expansion in the population of sea urchins and these sea urchins will totally destroy away the seaweeds and seaweeds are totally responsible for what for productivity in the ocean they are they performs photosynthesis and they act as a source of biomass in the oceans okay so third is the correct option one and three would be the most appropriate option so i hope people the session was clear to you and thank you so much for watching the session i hope you will revise you got to know a lot of things from the session if any doubt you can just ask me in the comment section bye bye take care and jai hind